I cast out? But it is you who are the villains. Father told me that I am hope. I am righteousness. That I am a god. That is why I was born as man and sin eater both. I kept the people safe. They respected me. Worshipped me. How can this be? I should be the one looking down at you. Look, the sky. Were it not for my decisive action, the whole city would have been overrun, razed to the ground. Yet they dare to complain about casualties? Spare me. I'll wager they were put up to it by those wretches who seek to usurp me. They're stirring up the citizenry. But if they think I will yield to the likes of them, they are gravely mistaken. To be subjected to such deplorable treatment, such ingratitude. You have my sympathy, sir. You do so much good for this city, and you could do so much more were you not surrounded by fools. Who are you? You're not supposed to be in here. My apologies for the intrusion, but I come bearing a proposal, one that will ensure the longevity of your reign. But give me the word, sir, and I will bring hither a light warden. By giving its power to the babe within your lady wife's womb, we shall create a transcendent being, a king to rule over all. And as sire to the king, your authority will never again be in question.
<laughs> Amazing. Before my Vorthri, they behave as docile pets. With this gift, my line should be guaranteed power for perpetuity. We shall rule the whole world. By all means, sir. United under Yulmor's banner, men will cease fighting and abandon their ambitions. Thus, they will grow fat and complacent, and in their sloth, seal your supremacy. Are you all right? Say something! Twelve for Fend. She cannot contain the light. She's beginning to turn. Orionje, if you've ought up your sleeve, now is the time. It's changing back. The combined power of every Light Warden is too terrible a burden for any one soul to bear. And so I shall relieve you of it. Exarch! What are you doing? I will channel this profusion of power to the Crystal Tower and use it to travel to other worlds. As I have dreamed of doing ever since I first learned of their existence. Who would choose to remain here in this dying realm when they might go elsewhere and begin anew? Not I. And thus, thus did I use you! No, no! I don't believe you! It doesn't make sense! Damn you! We won't let you do with her as you please! Do not interfere! Please, I beseech you all, let him go! You knew of this, Urianger. Tis all a fiction. Such vaguely defined acts of teleportation stand no chance of success. The Exarch will never live to see another world, as he knows only too well. Then, what does he mean to do? He means to take the light with him into the rift, where he will die. From the beginning, he intended to sacrifice himself to save our friend and Norvrent. At journey's end, an opportunistic thief makes off with the hero's prize. A paltry way to end a chapter. I concede. Yet your tale will continue, and my role in it will scarcely be remembered. Worry not. Whatever should become of me, I will be happy and free, safe in the knowledge that I have played my part.
Thank you for fighting for this world. For believing. Fare you well, my friend. My inspiration. Only those who possess the royal eye of the Alagan Imperial line are capable of controlling the Crystal Tower. Such individuals do not exist in the first. Therefore, in all likelihood, the Exarch arrived here with the Tower. This much I had surmised, yet I could not discern his grand scheme. To think that he went through all this trouble for the sake of a single hero. It's almost admirable in its absurdity. Alas, it is not your grand scheme that will succeed, but ours. You bastard! Stay put. Your friend is still alive, but whether he remains so depends on you. What a disappointment you turned out to be. I placed my faith in you. Let myself believe that you could contain the light. But look at you now. Halfway to becoming a monster. You are unworthy of my patronage. I am an Asian. My heart's sole desire is to usher in the great rejoining. A hundred years ago, I entrusted my comrade Logriff with the task of increasing light sway over this world. This we sought to do by manipulating heroes. When that failed to achieve the desired result, I created Vorthri. Thanks to your meddling, that too has ended in failure. What was your true purpose in approaching us? By your twelve, boy, have I not told you before that everything I said was the truth? You were specimens by which I might gauge man's potential as it stands. I genuinely had an interest in you genuinely considered taking you on as allies. Provided she could contain and control the light. If not, then she, and by extension you, would be of no use to me. T'was as simple as that. So, we've been found wanting. How disheartening. But even had we fulfilled your conditions, there was no guarantee that we would cooperate. What then? Then I simply kill you all. At the very least, it would restore the world to the way it was before you went about trouncing Light Wardens willy-nilly. Suffice it to say, it would be most inconvenient to have all that light taken away. And I would be lying if I were to claim his actions didn't have me worried. Hmm. You still retain your form and your senses. But you have all but become a Sin Eater. Whether you will it or no, your mere existence will serve to engulf the world in light. Those in your company will likewise turn into Sin Eaters.
And in time, you will succumb to your base instincts and hunt innocents to feast on their sweet, sweet ether. Those few with the will left to fight may rise up against you. But before your absolute might, they will quickly know despair. There is no hope. We are finished. Mankind is finished. Ah, oh, the irony. What Fourth Three achieved through bliss, you achieved through despair. But I have overstayed my welcome. I shall look forward to seeing you bring the world to its knees, hero. Exarch! I have naught to show for all the time and effort I invested in you. He is a small token for my troubles. I did not expect that I could learn aught from man, but I may yet learn something from all the knowledge he had hoarded for his precious hero. I pity you, I do. Your friends are now your foes. If you do not kill them, they will kill you. When it all becomes too much to bear, seek me out at my abode in the dark depths of the Tempest. There, you may complete your descent into madness with some dignity, far from prying eyes. Till then, Til then, I bid you I farewell. Bid you farewell. Eater. Eater. Ah, finally. After you collapsed, Emmet Selk vanished. Then Reen did what she could to stay the raging of the light within your body. Thanks to her, you're still you. But she's only delayed the inevitable. You're not going to like what you see, but you still need to see it. like this all over. The whole of Norvrat is shrouded in light again. And it's because of you and the power you absorb from the Wardens. No one knows but your friends. 
When they carried you down from the mountain, they told everyone waiting below that they didn't understand why the light had returned. And now they're out there trying to allay the people's fears while searching for a way to save you. You're well enough to be up, you're well enough to get some fresh air. Better that than stewing in here. Go on. Go. The people of this city have spirit, I'll give them that. They've not lost the will to fight. I can imagine how torn you must feel, looking at that sky. Knowing what it means to everyone. And that you're responsible. If you're thinking of coming clean, don't. It might make you feel better, but it would make things a hundred times worse for them. They're better off not knowing. You're in a corner, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious way out. doesn't mean it's over. However hopeless it seems, you haven't lost yet. I remember looking up at the sky like this before. Being caught up in a strange kind of calm. It was after we realized we were responsible for the Flood. When we resolved to journey to the Source by taking our own lives. One last sacrifice. One last fight. One last failure. And then the Oracle appeared and... Well... You know the rest. There were times in the years and decades that followed when I wondered if we might not have been better off just letting the rejoining happen. That we'd made one last mistake. But seeing that giant Talos stir to life cured me of any doubts I still had. Always. Always we took the burden of fighting upon ourselves. That's what heroes do, isn't it? So we never had the chance to see anything like that. Our people coming together as one. To think that their hope still burns so bright. That they were still so eager to live, they would lift up their fellows, one on top of the other, till they reached the sky. No. 
We made the right decision. And I can finally feel proud of the part we played in helping this world survive. Well, come on then. As I thought, what happened between us was no coincidence. My story may be finished, but the fates have gifted me a minor role in yours. I suspected as much the moment I realized you could hear me. But it's hard not to doubt yourself when you're the man who caused the flood. I was afraid to do anything more than watch for fear of making things even worse. But no longer. After all, the path I once walked is now yours to finish. For what it's worth, I cast my lot with yours. If you need a push, I'll be right there behind you. If you lose control, I'll do my best to stop you. So, let us be about it, hero. You were up here all alone, brooding and fretting and wallowing in your woes. But look at you, grinning at nothing like a pollen-drunk pixie. Hmm. Look at what you've done to your ether. It's a mess. And you have cracks running all through that pretty soul of yours. My poor little sapling. Whatever am I to do with you? Shall I yield up my throne? You could claim it. Cut ties with the mortal world. Hide away in the castle. It won't fix the problem. But would it really matter? If any pesky heroes come calling with steel and magic, all of Eel Meg will rise up in your defense. My crown and scepter are yours, if you want them. What? Don't give me that look! Of course I knew before I asked that you'd never ever heed such a wicked suggestion! And besides, what would become of my precious and ephemeral flower? Beloved sapling, you are lost, confused, and have precious little time to gather your wits. Your kind is always so preoccupied with what lies ahead, and so we muddle your vision with fog and glamour. But such trickery is easy to see through. Stand very, very still. Think not of where you need to go. But where you are right now, at this moment, at this time, in this place. Our Cairn of Crystal. From shadowed hood he watched you go, his ruby eyes with warmth aglow. 
See yourself as he saw you, and that shall be the clearest clue. You stand in his garden, dear sapling. Ask his flowers what they know, and you will surely find an answer. But what will you do with it, I wonder? I'll be watching and waiting. Waiting and watching. <laughs> <laughs>